All right, here we are back with some more AEW reactions. I very much apologize for missing out on Wednesday. It was just a busy week in the life of your boy, and I wasn't going to force in reactions that weren't genuine. Um, I still watched Dynamite. I caught up on the YouTube clips, but it was more of like I was watching to like not be out of the loop. So I was like, all right, got to watch this clip, got to watch this clip. And I didn't have like genuine emotion attached to it. So I wasn't sat down as like a fan. I wasn't ready to engage. So here we are, AEW Rampage, and Bach is looking like, Bach, I just said Bach, Pac is looking like a bad man, 18 and 5, I love that the banners have Rampage coloring, orange and blue, I'm so hyped for this match, I avoided spoilers because I know that this is pre-taped and it's supposed to be like a banger, so I'm hyped. I'm hyped, man. Let's address the elephant in the room real quick as this match is kicking off. I feel like an AEW shill <laughs> with that with the merchandise. I wore the I wore the hoodie for All Out. I wore the hoodie for another CM Punk reaction, and I got some new stuff. <laughs> um, we got we got the we got a T. Uh, I think it's like a Raglan T or a uh, Heather Black or something. And then of course we got the AEW zip up hoodie, yeah, really do. complete with the logo exactly right so on the back. Whenever I put this on, I feel like CM Punk, like walking out, like, you know, here we go. Best in the world. But yeah, how could I not? How could I not get more stuff? Like, I love rocking the stuff that I, I love. Uh, wrap in the brands that I love, same way anyone would wear, you know, polo if you're a polo fan, same way anyone would wear American Eagle jeans if you're into American Eagle. Um, I love AEW and I love comic book movies, and my clothes reflect that. I also got the the one shirt on everyone's mind. Check it out. Boom! Best in the world, CM Punk, complete with the uh, the collar. What do they call this? I forget. But it sold out. I bought it the next day as soon as Pro Wrestling Tees went back online. I'm very happy with it. Let's go, Pac. He's so graceful. It's ridiculous. It's not fair. He just did that move so easily, I would think that I could do that. And I can't even do a full rotation of a flip when I jump off of a boat. This reaction will go out after the match is over, obviously. And, I mean, spoilers have already been out. I've avoided them like the plague. But who did you guys think were, was going to win this match now that you've already seen it? Because the easy answer is Andrade because he's new to the scene. But Pac has been very protected. Even though he's been mostly mid-card, I know he got the world title shot at double or nothing, but that felt weird. Like, Orange Cassidy and Pac didn't feel like main eventers when they got that title shot. I don't know what it is. There's a certain vibe you get with guys. It's like, it's the it factor thing. Not that Pac or Andrade doesn't have the it factor, Pac specifically. But he, he feels a, a tiny tier below main event status. I don't know what it is. One thing to note about both these guys, they are very protective of their respective statuses. Stati? Stati? Statuses, no. That's the full word. I mean that in the sense of like, when Pac signed with AEW, it was coming off of a very murky exit from WWE. And I know he wrestled a little bit for, I want to say Dragon Gate, maybe Noah, not 100% certain. But the point is, he left WWE wanting to be protected because he had some losses that just hurt his status a little bit. Um, the losses to Enzo were not good for him. He lost the Cruiserweight title on a Raw I was at in Boston. Who did he lose it to? Oh my god. Um, was it? It wasn't Kalisto. Was it Kalisto? I'm gonna look it up. 
Akira Tozawa. That's what it was. He lost. He dropped the title to Akira Tozawa for a second. Already getting this is awesome chance. What was I saying before about the protection of these two guys? Andrade seems like a guy. I remember he was Tony Khan approached him to sign very early on after he was released because he was flat out released no no compete but they didn't work out an agreement because of creative control i don't think it was a money thing oh man oh the double stomp but the point is if andrade had hesitations to sign with AEW over creative control i don't think he def i don't think he gave it up completely which make, makes me think he still has some say in what matches he's booked in in whether he wins or loses not full say but i think you know he has a little bit more pull than like some of the younger guys but if Pac has something similar this match gets very unpredictable mom banking on andrade winning just because he's much newer to AEW. pac has been around since day one but that's that i remember reading a rumor this can be confirmed or denied i'm not 100 percent certain but Double or Nothing 2019, when we were supposed to get Pac versus Hangman, I remember reading that Pac was booked to lose, and that's why he no-showed that pay-per-view, or they had to rework it. And that's why Hangman was in the Battle Royal instead, won the Battle Royal, went on to All Out, Jericho beat Omega, went on to All Out, and that was the plan. That, or... I also remember reading that Omega was supposed to beat Jericho, go on to All Out. Pac was supposed to beat Hangman, go on to All Out. And Omega was supposed to be the first champion. And Pac didn't want to lose a high profile match like that so early in his AEW career. This could all be wrong, but I'm just remembering what I read way back when. But Pac did go on to beat Omega at All Out. Of course, it wasn't for the title. Wow, graceful. Casual starship pain from Andrade. Except it looked a lot more brutal than John Morrison's starship pain. What's your favorite iteration of John Morrison's ring name? Let me know in the comments below. I'm giving you all a lot of question prompts, but I'm just, they come to my head and I'm gonna ask him. I am a Johnny Mundo guy. Lucha Underground, baby. It's a wonder that John Morrison never had the Johnny Wrestling nickname. It was right there for him. Okay, Pac. Corkscrew, Hark, and Rana. Sorta, kinda. Okay. Oh, Pac. Oh, no. Hung up again. Hung upside down. Second time in this matchup. Stretch those knees out, man. They Andrade, you don't have to do this, man. He's gonna try to do the same thing, I guess, I, I right? I think you're right, Tony. That's exactly, I think, what Andrade... Uh-oh. Yeah. Nice. Reel him in. That wrestling move makes no sense. Why would you lift yourself up? Here comes Pac, baby. Unbelievable. He makes it look so easy. Oh! I thought it was about to be a screwy finish. I thought Remsburg was, was being screwy, but Andrade got the rope. Sneaky. This is awesome. Was that a Pele kick? Because that was the sickest Pele kick I've ever seen. Oh, the Hammerlock DDT. It's the best DDT in wrestling. I don't care what anyone says. I understand it's there, it's a traditional move and people are married to the past, but the hammerlock is the best DDT. Oh, the snap! The snap German suplex is so pretty! Oh! Belly to belly into the corner. Oh my god. Oh, into the brutalizer! The rings of Saturn! What the hell? Oh my god! He's got a taser? Who is this? I know him. He's the. Oh, let's go. Oh. Pentel Zero. Ray Phoenix. Come on, Chavo. Lame. Kick out Pac. Lame. I want to see the hammerlock DDT. I guess it protects Pac a little bit, but still. 
Okay, are we gonna address that one of Andrade's managers has a freaking taser? That's what? <laughs> Jose, excuse me for not knowing his name. I don't like that. An iPad shot to the back being enough to finish off Pac. The Lucha Bros are so drippy. Oh man. There's someone about the all white shoes and it looks like they're wearing like off-white t-shirts and still wearing their wrestling masks. What? What the hell just happened? What was that about? Holy smokes, I told him what happened. What was... And, and Andre El Idolo wanted to win this one apparently on his own. Wow, that came out of nowhere. Andrade and just attacked Chavo. Chavo. Wanting, and and wanting to win this one on his own. That's cool, a cool heel. No. Are we getting Los Ingobernables? There's something about Darby. He's got the Jeff Hardy factor to him. He's not wildly great on the mic. He's not even like, okay, he's really good in the ring, but he's not like, he's not Omega, he's not Okada. He's just got that charisma to him. Sean Spears is a joke. I'm sorry. I used to love Sean Spears. But you can't talk tough if you don't back it up. Sean Spears, listen to me, you generic piece of shit. Without Tolly, you are He's not wrong. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. He's he's really not wrong. He he really just told a lot of facts there. Didn't you ride on the coattails of Slick Rick for many, many years? Oh! What about our name? He rode his coattails time! We're not getting Tully Blanchard versus Sting. Right? Oh, yeah. I don't mean tonight, I mean at all. There's, there's Sean Spears. He's so dangerous. He's the chairman now. No, he loves the chair. Let's go. What's going on? Boom. As a group, as a faction, but what I like to call it, as a brotherhood, is incredibly special. The elite was designed as a bunch of very individual, talented professional wrestlers coming together to show how powerful. We really are. Adam Cole was in NXT less than a month ago. With my life, and he trusts me. Why would you trust I Kenny trust with your life? Bucks with my life. He and turned on me. you with Marty Skrull and Ring of Honor. I remember. Christian and Brian Danielson, they're special. There's a reason that people look at them so highly. There's a reason that people respect them so much because their body of work is undeniable. That the difference is. They think they're going to be able to keep up with guys like me. I can promise you I'm not even in my prime yet. And I would wipe the floor with Brian Danielson. If Adam Cole isn't in his prime yet. The way that all the elite acts and dresses sound to me like people who are insecure. Brian so I'm not Danielson. exactly going after all of the elite. We're going after one member of the elite. I've heard how great Kenny Omega is. I've seen how great Kenny Omega is. You're the greatest wrestler who's ever lived. You're afraid to take this match. You are not on my level. The reality is I'm just excited to get in the ring and wrestle. Kenny Omega I'm versus Brian Danielson is not happening in New York City, right? Match. If he doesn't want to step up, there will be somebody else. There's no way, else. right? One of the things I love about AEW is everybody's hungry. Everybody Damn wants right, to everyone's hungry. Everybody wants to prove themselves. I'm here, and I'm game. Let's go. For too long, more has been reserved for the few. Pause, man. Pause for a second. Are they building to Omega versus Brian at frickin' Arthur Ashe? Am I gonna see that? I hope. I really hope. At the same time, though, I was kind of surprised to hear that they were already going to Omega versus Brian because a similar thing happened with Christian Cage. He debuted and he attacked Omega and got in the ring with him, got physical, lifted up the title, 
and then was separated for five months. And so it, I got the vibe that same thing was happening with Brian. He had to rack up wins. They were going to be married to the rankings, as I think they should be. They're very much pushing to Brian versus Omega right now. Like before Full Gear. I still hold Full Gear's hangman's moment. And I don't know if I want Brian to win the title. So how do they play this? It would be a screwy finish. But if it's going to be in New York City, I really don't want it to be a screwy finish. I don't know. Ah. So those are a couple of my reactions to AEW Rampage tonight. Want to keep it brief, so I only picked a couple segments uh, to react to. But yeah, I'm sorry for missing Dynamite, by the way. I want to be watching Dynamite like it's appointment television. Unfortunately, I won't have Dynamite reactions for about another month. If you're really married to my content and that's actually disappointing to you, well, thank you uh, for, for caring so much that me not having Dynamite reactions um, would be upsetting. But I will have some cool stuff planned instead. Uh, that's a tease. And I'll just tell you what it is. You already know. I've already spoken many times about how I'm going to Arthur Ashe. But I'm also going to Rochester the following week. So they won't be reactions, they probably won't be reviews or predictions. Maybe I'll do predictions for Arthur Ashe, if you really want them, let me know in the comments below. I'll put together a little, a little vlog, a little journey to Arthur Ashe, journey to Rochester. If that's something you're interested in, and seeing my journey, because I will be, hopefully, at the media scrum afterwards with my Wrestling Inc. credentials and whatnot. Um, and I don't know if I'll be able to film, but I'll have some fun stories to tell afterwards. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments below. All it takes is one person. Seriously, if I have an audience of one who says, hey, I want a Liam Crowley AEW Dynamite vlog, you're going to get it. I'm a man of the people, and I love having an a audience as small as it is or as big as it is to chat wrestling about. Because I love this sport, and I love sharing my opinions with the world about it. So yeah. Those are my AEW Rampage reactions. Thank you again so much for tuning in, for supporting this channel, and for supporting professional wrestling. Because we are in a boom period right now. I hope you all can feel that. I wasn't alive for the 90s, but I've never felt something like this before. And it's special. So if you're a fan, I encourage you to watch. If you're, a, if you're on the fence, I encourage you to watch. And I encourage you to support professional wrestling, whatever you like. WWE, Impact, Ring of Honor, Chikara, Pro Wrestling Guerrilla, AEW, New Japan, Progress, Rev Pro, ICW, Evolve, any of your local indie promotions, GCW, New England Wrestling, anything. Whatever you watch, just support it. Because this business thrives when its fan base is hot. And I think these post-pandemic shows are very much showing that. Thank you all again so much for watching. Let me know what kind of content you want in the comments below. And I'll be seeing you soon.